Good morning. I am feeling mostly better from last night. I'm at least not like burning up as much anymore. And I don't seem to be as like fully exhausted as I was. It was like this like mental and physical exhaustion that I just couldn't kick. Mind you, it's only the morning. So we'll see what the rest of the day holds. But we are getting on a bus shortly and heading further north to explore more of the country. That's good. We were initially intending on getting public transit because Google said it was just one line to go all the way down. But then when we got to the ticket counter, they said that we needed to change lines at least twice in order to get there, which would have pushed us way over when we should have been getting our bus. So instead we got a grab and we're now on our way to the bus station. got onto the seats on our bus and I have to say this has given me a very strong early 90s vibe. These seats are very jazzy, extremely disco. And to top it all off, they are very wide, they recline, they have two different types of footrests and there's USB chargers. And definitely to top it off for me, I have acres of legroom. Absolutely amazing. That bus was meant to take five hours. We're here eight hours and 15 minutes later. Brutal. <laughs> it was, and now we have to hop on a ferry to get to the center of Georgetown, which is where our hotel is. So, wish us luck. Our ferry tickets were free. We're not entirely sure why, but we're not going to question it. We couldn't really find a decent place for a meal inside the terminals, so we just picked up a couple of snacks to keep us tidying over. So we have red dragon fruit here, which apparently is incredible, and then just some peanuts to keep us tidying over. to our hotel. Whoop, whoop. It is 9.45 at night and we just stopped at a convenience store to pick up, you guessed it, onigiri. So we are just going to chill out and we'll pick up in the morning. See you then. Good morning. From Georgetown, which is the capital of Penang State. We've heard that this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Yes, the entire town is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, so there's a lot of historical and cultural significance here. We've also heard that the food here is incredible. So with that, we're going to spend today walking around and checking everything out. Super excited for it. We have arrived at Kenpin Cafe, which has been recommended on multiple articles that we did our research on. It seems like you order drinks in one place and then there's a bunch of other street food stands just around the area that you go to individually. We've been recommended a couple of things. So the first one is this one called Lobak, which is fried pork with sauces and to drink though, we have been told that Penang white coffee, which is meant to be with a mix of margarine and sugar, is also the way to go. So let's give this a try. Mm. The 
coffee bean is super rich in itself, but then when you add like the creaminess of the margarine and the slight sweetness of the sugar, this is really, really nice. Now to give the low back a go. It looks like this is more like a chili sauce and this one seems to be kind of, maybe not, not sure. Maybe it's black bean. It might be black bean, let's give it a try. It is black bean and it's wonderful. For the win. Bit sweet, mostly savory, all great. We can try another little bit of the plate here. I'm slathering this in sauce, God knows how hot this is actually going to be. Mm. It's basically like a sweet chili sauce. It's got a bit of heat to it, but it's not overpowering by any stretch. It's just a nice, mild spice underneath. Really good stuff. I'm about to try Char Kway Tao. I'm probably butchering the name. Mm. That's so good. It is lightly spiced and just an excellent stir fry. That's so good. And just, you know, all of this came to 24 ringgit, which is under 8 Canadian dollars. I think I have a better idea of what's in this now. Prawns, the white rice noodles, bean sprouts, spring onions, oysters, and tofu as well as egg. So a really, really yummy mix, all stir fried together, kind of like a Malaysian version of Pad Thai. One of the things that we were advised to do in Georgetown is to check out the street art. You can type into Google Maps Penang Street Art and it will even give you a pinned location where you can find a concentrated amount of it. And so we've just been wandering through this area and it's so much more than just street art. There's all these cute little souvenir shops and very trendy looking cafes and restaurants and ice cream shops that are selling smoothies and shaved ice, I think is a big thing here. So it's a fun little area to wander around and do some window shopping or actual shopping for that matter.
With that, then they invited a lot of Chinese migrant workers in order to help stimulate the economy, not least through trade and also the tin mining industry, which was really taking off at that time. Because the Chinese migrant workers needed means of surviving and establishing a community, then those that came from a similar historical background, cultural background, or lineage background banded together to form clans. Each of those clans set themselves up within the ports of Georgetown, close to the sea, so that they could make sure that they continued their work. In order to establish that, then they built these jetties. Typically, a jetty is just a launch site for a boat, but they decided to develop these further into little self-contained villages, to the point where there were houses built on stilts that still jut out into the sea even today, and that is the very thing that we are sat on and I am talking to you from right now. Of the jetties that were built, there are six still standing today, which can be visited by tourists for set periods during each day, because there are still fundamentally people living here who do need to live and sleep. This one is called the Tan Jetty. It seems to be the most residential one still, but there are a bunch of other ones that have since been converted into more cultural or commercial centers. The previous one that we were on is Chu Jetty, and that one seems to be a lot more set up for commercial success with a lot of cafes and restaurants and tourist shops and everything like that. And definitely the intention is that we're gonna go and check out a few more just to see what they're all about. to Hin Bus Depot based on the recommendation of one of the blogs that we read and it's meant to be an area where they have some like art installations and some souvenir shops and cafes and restaurants but unfortunately not much is open right now it does look like they have the setup for it it's just that it's all closed so we have to find somewhere else to eat <laughs> Something that's not traditional at all. 
we're treating ourselves to a fudgy brownie and a huge slice of carrot cake. I'm salivating. Let's get going. It's carrot cake time. Is it the best carrot cake you've ever had? Be honest. It's up there. Wow. It is, it's, it's very carrot cake. That's saying something, because as carrot cake connoisseurs, we've tried a few. Fudgy brownie time. day out in Georgetown we came back and went straight to a food coma yep and then we woke up realized that uh, we were kind of just tired and wanted to chill and, and we should probably get some editing done so I think we're gonna call it that for the day but until the next time take care and keep smiling